Hey everybody, Vaughn here with the Vaughnster vlog and welcome to this week on the homestead. We are doing just a bunch of stuff. Same old, same old daily grind, but I'm loving it. And today we are getting a chicken going. <laughs> so I figured it'd be a lot easier to just show you what we're doing than to be like, blah, 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 this is what we're doing. I gotta get the seasoning though. So first things first, I have defrosted a chicken and I'm using this salt free dash chicken grilling blends I believe check in to make sure that there's no sugar in it nope no sugar excellent so because uh, we're not quite doing keto but we are going uh, no processed sugar, so keto style recipes are very, very friendly for what we're doing. And at the time of recording, last time I weighed myself, I was down six pounds. Uh, it had been two weeks since I had weighed myself, but it had only been one week since um, being on this lifestyle change of no sugar. So I'm gonna cram an apple inside of this chicken's body. Uh, so let's grab by the legs and pull. <laughs> so <laughs> there's that. And I'm gonna wash, I, I've washed everything already. I'm gonna wash it down again because um, I'm getting chicken hands on literally everything. So I just want to cover this chicken in seasoning. So there's one side, I'm gonna flip them over, do the back side. getting it literally everywhere there we are lots of seasoning and then we are going to get it situated I normally do them breast side down but I want to air fry this after pressure cooking oh gosh I'm covered uh, okay Oop. here's the thing I'm gonna put it in let's pick this up Slapping, of course, everything in the kitchen with raw chicken before getting that done. And pulling this off to the side. I'm going to put the giblets and stuff. I want to save that for making broth because after we cook this chicken, I'm going to be using all of the um, bones and stuff to make a really nice stock. I'm just getting this lowered into the Ninja Foodi. I don't know how many quarts this is. I think it's the eight quart. We'll see. And then I'm gonna come in with just some peanut oil and drizzle that all over the top. I'm gonna dump one cup of water into the bottom. So yeah, dumping one cup of water. I just rinsed all the seasoning off of that part. There we go, that's fine. That'll get washed again. And now I'm gonna use, hi! Ow, I have seasoning in my apple. Okay, um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna set this on there. I'm gonna turn it. I don't even know what that was. Oh, all the silverware just broke off of the dish drain and went into the sink. That's fine, it's fine. Uh, I'm gonna turn, it's not plugged in. Okay, now it's plugged in. We are gonna put it on pressure, and it's gonna be on pressure, yeah, on high, and then I'm gonna do it for like 30 minutes. There we go. And again, making sure that I'm on seal. And start, there we go. Okay guys, please pardon the hissing in the background. That's the Instapot or the Ninja Foodi coming up to temperature. I am making chocolate peanut butter. Keto chow. Mm. It's backlit. Yep. There you go. <laughs> um, Maddie, is our, Maddie is our camera critter today. <laughs> and um, so I guess I'm gonna do 
what's it, four ounces. But it, it's coming up to pressure. This is perfectly normal. We should not at all be alarmed. Hmm. 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 Yes, indubitably. Hmm. <laughs> yes. Okay, four ounces of heavy whipping cream. There we are. Which, okay, I was talking to my good friend who has been very successful on keto, and she's the one who had recommended to me these keto chow shakes. And because I am a smooth-brained person, I was putting the heavy, like, I was building the shake like this, but then doing it in the Ninja, like, blender thing, and it came out so dummy thick that, like, you could barely get it through the straw, and it was, like, it was delicious, but it was, like, drinking uncooked cake batter, like, in consistency. Uh, so, and then she was like, hey, you know you're using heavy whipping cream, right? They can't see it because of our crappy lighting. Um, but that's fine. I'm gonna zoom in on the action. Oh yeah. So I'm gonna dump this in there. Shake, shake, shake. Shake, shake, shake. And then because I am like a Charmin bear, if I remember to, I'll insert the meme that mm -hmm. I'm talking about into the oh there's no scoop in it. But we're putting in a whole tablespoon of fiber. Cause a couple years ago, we got Randy a new toilet for our, like, anniversary, and the dude told us that you can flush 40 golf balls down it, and I am here to test that theory. Maddie's saying no, okay? <laughs> so there's that, and then instead of water today, because I want something really, like, decadent, I'm going to be using almond milk, and so I'm going to bring that up to, like, I guess the maximum line. I really hope I like almond milk. I think I do. And then I'm going to shake this, and then I'm going to put some ice in it. Would you say that's a pretty good way to... Yes. Okay. I guess it's just going to keep hissing. Okay, I've got the lid on nice and tight. Shake, shake, shake. Shake, shake, shake. God damn, this is indecent. <laughs> okay, get the camera after giving myself and everyone in a 10 foot radius around me a black eye, I have shaken up the keto chow. And I'll, I'm gonna throw some ice cubes on the counter and then I'm gonna put some into my shake. And there we go guys, lunch. So that was a wild adventure. Um, That's really good. Okay, so we're a couple minutes over, so I'm gonna click stop, and we are going to open this up to vent, and I'm gonna let it quick release. So this is what we did with that chicken that we cooked in the pressure kick, or er, Ninja Foodie. Um, pressure cooked it, let it sit in the fridge overnight, uh, cause we got tired, and then just put it into the air crisper at 375 until it was nice and crispy and almost burning on top. And it looks, that little pink there, that's just bone. But I think it looks, especially Maddie's plate. Her plate is picturesque. And then Randy's got a big old titty on the plate.
That's really good. <laughs> so Maddie made breakfast and it's phenomenal. She makes like the best eggs. I'm here working on a sewing project and uh, she actually took some of, I think this might've been some of her first vlog footage. So of her cooking and I'm like, I'm so proud, like, oh. and uh, egg, so. Mm. Ooh. very good okay guys so i am making some lunch maddie made eggs for breakfast and they breakfast and they were delicious and now they're not cooked yet but i've got some chicken wings laid out and we're making a salad that's on washing but this all needs to go out to the chickens because there's like if I put in the greens while they have this oxidation and stuff going, it, set, it, it sets in and becomes this like rot. And the chickens are very, they pick around the rot part. So I don't mind giving them lettuce to, to kind of scratch through and stuff. Um, now I wouldn't give them something where it was all just slimy, but if they're not interested in it, they won't pick at it. But let's go take the girls their salad. <laughs> For as sunny as it is, y'all, it's really not as hot today as it could be. <sighs> Says I, who am now feeling the sun on my flesh, and it's horrible, and I hate it. Um, it's fine, though. But yeah, I'm going to keep taking the girls. Their salad. Let's see if they're excited. Just coming through. Hey, ladies. How are you today? I'm going to have to set the phone. I can hold it like this while I open the gate. Because we're fixing to get all sorts of rain and stuff this evening. Get that down. And now, okay, you ready? Ah. <laughs> there we go. Happy, happy chicken. Got a happy, 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 happy chicken. Well, go be a happy chicken. But yeah, so they just tear right into it. I love it. Not a bad way of turning less than ideal greens. They really love that butterhead lettuce. <laughs> I know, I know. The rabbits are like, excuse me, can we have some of that? I will not feed the rabbits greens that are anything less than ideal. Ginger, can I help you, baby? I love you. I love you, pretty bird. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. She's like, don't touch my... <laughs> but yeah, you can really see the amount of shade. Now, the, the chickens still have some nice full sun spots, but the amount of shade provided by these Jerusalem artichokes, they have really just sprung up, and I'm loving it. Now, I'm out here by Callie, and we have some sour cherries I'm gonna harvest for my Randy he just eats them straight to make my face pucker to watch him eat because these are so so sour but I'm gonna get a bunch harvested and uh, give them to my honey so it's not a huge amount of cherries but it's something nice to go with the salad and chicken for lunch there's more on the alley side but I'm too short to reach them so I'm gonna have to get Randy to come out and help he typically holds the branch down for me and then I pick them all into a basket. Now over here, I'm gonna be pruning back some new growth. And you can see we've got some stuff going on. I don't know what's going on with our grapes, but they don't look happy. Like a bunch of them look like they've got like rot spots, but then these guys up here, oh boy, look like they're doing great. But I don't need these big vines poking out. Like let me really back up. Also, we've got like an extreme aphid problem. Ouch. Ooh, I just hit my head on the bird on the bird feeder. But you can see we've got all of these branches coming out, and I don't need that down low. So they don't have any fruit on them right now. So I'm just gonna double check that and make sure. And I'm gonna prune this one. Yep. Oh, there's one. 
I'm going to prune this one just a leaf past where the grapes are. That guy, I think we can, yeah, we, that guy can stay. I'm going to, yeah, we don't need this whole one coming up this way. I'm going to snip just right past where the fruit set. And I'd like to see, oof, we've got some kind of blight hitting the leaves as well. But I think we can do some cooking with grape leaves. And I think for some of these healthier leaves, that would actually be really cool to be able to utilize that. So yeah, this one's sticking out this way. Let's see. Sorry for my excellent camera work. I'm going to pull that one apart. Okay, I'm going to snip this one here. No, here. There we are. And it's just enough to pull back, open this up, keep it from taking over the world. Yeah, and you can see it was already starting to, uh, man, look at the size of those grapes. Just hang in there. Not gonna lie, I can't wait till this entire, you can see the density of the shade it provides right there. I can't wait for this grapevine to have taken over above this entire pergola. Mm. Oh, it'll make me happy. <laughs> and now I'm gonna come up here and do that one. I'll go ahead and give it the snippy snip. There we are. Yeah, it's really coming together. Now I can get on a ladder and train that one, you know, the ones that are up high to do their thing. But I'd really like to get the plant to put its energy um, And those higher up these guys I'll get trained going up as well so but that's a start so it shouldn't be smacking me in the head anymore or grabbing at me there's that one do, 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 do. okay I'm gonna finish this up not holding a camera so I can actually pay full attention to what I'm doing exception again Woo! there we go Hey guys, thanks for coming and hanging out. Mwah! Back to the premiere. <laughs> so we have some taters here that have chitted, which is they're sending out those little growths. So I'm going to be planting them in this bed just real quick before the rains start. And I do have my chickens running amok um, just because why not? There's no telling how long this rainy weather is going to last. So I figured I'd let them get their filibine outside well I could and I'm just dropping the potato on in not worrying about cutting them up anything like that I just want to get them bloop, kind of sprouted side up it's less than ideal but it's better than not planting anything You could be literally anywhere else in the yard. <laughs> oh, you like that kale, don't you? Looks like it's going to start raining any second now. The humidity is just going through the roof. Yo, that's my potato backlog. Thank you. 
So the potatoes got planted and it looks like they're fixing to get dug back up. So I'm going to go try to dig a hole literally anywhere else, maybe over there, to try to lure the chickens away. They're eating my kale, but at least somebody is. <sighs> well, <laughs> they're turning it all into eggs anyhow, so that's good. So I'm weeding around my Job's Tears now, trying to get whatever it is this stuff is out from around it and it feels like weeding grass out of grass. But fortunately the Job's Tears have a much more like cornstalk type um, manner. And I did do a relatively decent job of getting them planted on a bit of a grid, so I'm hoping that that uh, helps me out. And that I'm not just tearing up my own hard work. I'm hoping that with the rain incoming, it'll chase the chickens back in to their enclosure before they can do too much uh, damage. But man, saying, oh, you know, they won't, they won't trouble it, is like saying, it is just jinxing it is what it is it's by saying oh they won't mess this up is guaranteeing yes they're going to mess it up and saying oh yeah they'll mess this up is just acknowledging the fact that yes they are going to mess it up I'm going to use all this as a green mulch on this side. So, what I've been pulling up out of here, none of it's gone to seed or anything. I'm just going to use it to spread and protect the soil over here.
Well, it's making pretty quick work of clearing out, though. All things considered. Hey, everybody. Good morning. It is Friday the 10th. I weigh in tomorrow, and I am kind of nervous. I hope I lost, like, at least a pound this week, but that's neither here nor there. What's important this morning is tadpoles. So I don't know if you'll be able to see, but over here, I was spying on some. Cause like I had moved a rock and a bunch of them like swam. So, ooh, there you can see one. Look at how big he is. But I mean, I wish I had my camera out earlier because there were like five or six right in that one cluster. So I'm gonna kind of go around and spy a little bit more. Oop, tripping. I also, I need to come through and pull out some of these overgrown, like dead lily pads just to make some more room. Remove some of that decomposing matter. Oops. But it should let more light down into the bottom. But I want to see if I can't get some decent tadpole footage somewhere uh, and splice it in over here. So let's do that. So I have some stuff this morning that I'm going to be chomp, chomp, clomp, or clipping. Uh, we have some pokeweed that's come up over in this area. I have some black walnuts that are coming up over in this area. <clears throat> and I just need to go through and tidy some things up. So everything probably just looks like a flat green right now. But this stuff right here with leaves like that is bee balm. This is pokeweed and does not need to be here. So I'm gonna go down just below where, like I can't quite reach all the way to the roots right now, but I'm just snipping down low because the other leaves and stuff will block that out. And I'm not gonna be holding the camera while I rummage and reach back and try to get those other parts. Um, this is all just mint, beautiful, beautiful mint. I love that it's growing up and filling in this area. Uh, though I do feel like my pineapple sages have gotten completely overgrown, but that's fine. Um, some more bee balm right here. That's a box elder that needs taken out because they make me really itchy. There's another pokeweed. Here's that black walnut that needs taken down because you can see, well, the chicken's demolished that purple heart. But, um, yeah, just coming through, doing a little bit of tidying. I wanted to show you guys more of these just outstanding lilies. They look so beautiful. And we've got some more opening up. They just bloom and bloom and bloom, it seems. And you can see they've got some, they tossed some petals from older flowers. We've got some lilies down there that are, ooh, check out the grape, y'all. It's doing so good. I mean, considering it was next to nothing at the beginning of the season. Yeah, the, ooh, now there's the pineapple sage. At least one of them's doing good. I'm gonna have to get cuttings of that this fall because I'm tired of overpaying. Some wild violets, and these are actually, <clears throat> oh, didn't mean to disturb you, little bug. Go back to what you were doing. Uh, these are day flowers. I'm gonna zoom in quite close, but maybe, I'm trying to see which is better on my camera to get the lens up close or to just zoom and I think zooming it if I can hold the tripod still but yeah they have these two blue petals up top and then it has one white petal down below if you can kind of see there and then those little cluster 
of yellow and then those I need to relearn the plant parts because there's names for all this stuff but it's pretty and that's what it looks like and it's a day flower oh my god hey bug Look at that little bug just doing its thing. Blum, blum. My booty don't jiggle, jiggle. It folds. <laughs> bzz, bzz. Oh, there we go. Hold on, buddy. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I need to, whew. So much of what is tricky with um, getting video of stuff is, I'm a terrible camera person. <laughs> we'll have to figure that out. So my next task this morning is to tidy up the destruction wreaked by the chickens because I love them, but they destroy everything. Um, oof. So I'm just restocking this because I don't want to twist an ankle coming through and they sure do just love knocking it back down again. So I figure I may as well, you know, build the blocks back up for them to knock over like the hateful little dinosaurs they are. But I do love my chickens. <laughs> they got some powerful leg muscles to just be kicking this stuff. But also, uh, yeah, don't want to roll an ankle on it. Just kind of loose stacking it up against this leaning board. I don't know why this bed is just this way. Oh, it's coming in pretty though, isn't it? I'm so glad that these um, coleus and celosia and sweet potato vine and they're doing good. I've got some plants on the porch that need water too now that I'm thinking about it. Should probably get around to planting those today, but we'll see. Hmm. This chamomile doesn't want to be caught up in this net I don't think I'm gonna have to take that net down clearly it's not doing anything to keep the chickens out because I haven't put it down the rest of the way because if I put it down then I'm significantly less likely to lift it to uh, weed all right there we go but yeah all of those asters and chamomile that we had transplanted oh buddy you don't need to be here this is one of those Jerusalem artichokes, and <laughs> we do not need them taking over this bed as well. These lilies, <laughs> oh my gosh, buddy, are <laughs> just laying down. <laughs> That's okay. It's their first season here. We'll figure it out. They probably didn't get dug or planted deep enough. And I think, yeah, tilting them up is just going to stress them out. So I'll let them do whatever it is they feel like doing. Oh, see a weed, pick a weed. Well, there's ants everywhere on that one. But yeah, looking good. <laughs> so chickens think of my yoga spot. <laughs> okay, yeah, we've gotta we've gotta take care of this this week. We'll see. Ooh, okay. So now my next thing is I need to harvest strawberries and raspberries, and I of course did not bring a basket out. So I'm gonna use. 
these are volunteer plants anyhow. Which, oh, if only I had clippers in my hand. So I'm just gonna use a big leaf or two to make a little basket that I can then use. Actually, didn't I leave a little basket? Or did I take it inside? Bah, I took it inside, okay. Okay, so what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to bring my shirt up, and because I don't want to stain it, this is where the squash plant leaves come into effect. Just there in my pouch. Seaweed pulling. So I'm actually, I don't know if you can see what I'm doing, turning one leaf one way and the other leaf the other way, and that way it makes a little bit more of a bowl. that I find that aren't ready yet, I kind of set them on top of the other stems to keep them up out of the straw where slugs love to find them. Love to find themselves a nice little strawberry snack, which honestly I can't blame them, but these are my strawberry slugs. Back up. Get your own. Mm. Oh my god, those are so good. Okay. If I come across one like that one that I just had that still isn't fully ripe, but is pretty close and already has a little bit of chew damage on it, I just go ahead and pull it. It's just going to get more chewed up. Now that's something I like to avoid, is pulling up an additional stem. That one had a little bit of a chew spot on it, that's okay. It's still good. Okay. So I'm walking around now with my pouch of holding and I'm gonna harvest some more strawberry, or raspberries. Ooh. Sorry, I thought I had a bug on me. I'm going to put the camera a little larger. Mm. One for the pouch, one for me. Mm-mm-mm. Now I like them when they're a little darker. These are black raspberries. And honestly, I prefer red raspberries, but uh, these are what we have growing. Oh, I need to... I, I pulled some weeds and just left them there, apparently. Let's go on over to this side of the yard. 
the onions. Oh, they smell lovely. Oh, oniony. All those beautiful blooms. Just doing their thing. Pretty little onion flowers. So nice. Okay, back to... I also need to clip those back. Okay, I will get raspberries first. I'm going to start down on one end and just work my way through. Oh, that's a real nice one. Not bad for a morning's grocery shop. There's a hand clippers for scale. It's definitely enough fruit for the three of us to go for breakfast. So I have our morning's berries wrapped up in some squash leaves and you can see here I cleared out all those cherry suckers and then put the leaves down, stems and all, uh, any green stems, um, down around the base of the tree that I pruned them from. So hopefully that will feed the tree what it needs, or I might be doing something bad. I don't know, I should Google it. <laughs> hey guys, so I wasn't actually going to get video of this because as you can see, we have exceptional lighting because even though it's like two in the afternoon, um, this is just how dark our house is because the light over the sink and the light in the kitchen ceiling both will not turn on now. Um, so I was like, I'll just go ahead and get the thing made. But I have just mixed together following the, the instructions exactly for these Duncan Hines Keto Fudgy Chewy Fudge Brownie Mix. Um, so a third cup water, two large eggs from the garden, and six tablespoons of melted butter. I've preheated the oven because what else do you do when it's like 95 degrees and humid outside is, you know, bake all day. Um, and so I've stirred it together really thoroughly. It says until well blended about 50 strokes. Well, I lost count, but it seemed close enough. And I have one of these silicone baking mats for cupcakes. And this will be the second time I've made this recipe. The first time was a little bit of an experiment. And y'all, I'm not going to lie, the raw dough, not quite worth eating raw. Uh, it's very, it's not brownie batter. Uh, the way you would normally, you know, think of brownie batter. And I am just going to do a generous small ice cream scoop into each of these muffin tins. Now with the silicone, I don't grease or anything like that. Ouch, ooh, that pinched my hand. And just coming through. Again, I do apologize that the lighting's not better, but this is just what we're working with right now. Because, like, there's a part of me that's, like, very frustrated and frazzled with our deteriorating house it's just as soon as one thing gets fixed three or four others break um but it's not perfect but it's mine so here we are and i figured maybe y'all can relate a little bit with we're living the dream as best we can and focusing on the positive and not just on the crappy lighting. <laughs> mm -hmm. So I'm scraping the bowl. Trying to put it into... And I'm going to get these more or less centered. Just because it will kind of fill out the cup a little bit as it bakes. There we go. Now this doesn't actually have instructions for muffins, uh, like muffin size. It just has it for like an, either an eight by eight or a nine by nine pan. Um, so I, 
baked this at probably 20 minutes last time. Okay, so the power went off in, in the middle of baking, so I don't know how long I baked these for because the oven turned off when the power went off. But I ate one and it was good. It's really good. Like the textures there. Like if you ate these side by side by like regular brownies, I don't think they're as good. But considering these aren't gonna put me into a diabetic coma, I'll take it. And honestly, they are not bad. We're going to go feed them to our friends tonight who are not on sugar free and see what they think. So what I do for frosting, especially when it's on the go, is we have some cream cheese whipped with, like it's eight ounces of cream cheese, half a cup of heavy whipping cream, and a teaspoon and a half of Splenda to make the cream cheese frosting. And then this is just, it's backlit, but it's Birch Bender's chocolate frosting. And it's a little crumbly, but that's okay. We'll figure it out because as it heats up and especially like as you squeeze it um it's almost like kinetic sand a little bit where like it'll start to kind of move along um so it doesn't look like much but it doesn't taste like much but <laughs> um mixed with the cream cheese frosting it is absolutely amazing so and since we're taking this to friends i don't know who's gonna want what which is why I, this way they have the option of an unfrosted brownie, a cream cheese frosted brownie, a chocolate frosted brownie, or a cream cheese chocolate frosted brownie. So, yep. And then what I'll do is, well, make a mess. Squish all this down. Yeah, but you see, like under pressure, it's perfectly squishable. <laughs> um, I'll just snip the tip off when we get there, like just a little bit, and then use it as like a piping bag. So it looks super appetizing, but that's okay. <laughs> okay, so the cupcakes were more or less a hit. Um, I messed up and only did, I did 16 ounces of cream cheese instead of the eight ounces so I didn't quite add enough sweetener I liked it but that's just me um the f oh you're good Maddie the frosting after being in the fridge is like really hard to squeeze out but uh it was pretty good so I'm just gonna have one this morning with just the cream cheese frosting and I'm gonna have a little fudgy backlit cupcake muffin uh, for breakfast. You can see they, they were, I guess, a pretty good hit. We only have the two left now. And I made these uh, yesterday evening, so not bad. Y'all, check this out. The lilies are open. They're so pretty. They're crawling with ants, but that's fine. The ants like a sweet treat. So it's been 90 degrees for the past couple of days and there is no rain in sight. So I wanted to come through and check on, I'm going to, I'm going to probably still need to stay up on watering these grow bags, um, possibly daily. I'd like to try to do them every other day. I need to get this clipped back, but it pokes me. Um, oh, we still have some of our cucumbers poking up and through. That cucumber is doing real good. Excellent. Cucumbers and sweet potatoes together. And living in harmony. Ooh, this tomato does not look like he's doing so great. But yeah, I'm going to come through and hopefully in the morning water real, real well. Look at that tomato though. Nice. But yeah, everybody seems to be doing pretty good back here. Ooh, we got lots more raspberries to harvest. Which, this might just be the perfect little dessert to have. 
And now it's about almost 9 p.m. And we still have this much daylight. But other than the mosquitoes, now is not a bad time to come out and get some harvesting done. But I need to put my critters to bed. Hey everybody, it is the last day of the week. It is hot as heck, like it's rough. <laughs> so I am out here with my critters. I just wanted to hang out with the girls while they had their breakfast. And I wanted to thank all of our channel members whose names should be scrolling across the screen right now. Thank you guys so, so much for being here and for being you and just doing what you do. Y'all make what we do possible. And, uh, let's enjoy some chicken footage. I'm still waking up. It's been, this heat's been, uh, hard on everybody, I think. That's all right, though. Yeah, puppy. And so you can see here the difference that the shade cloth makes. It's minimal, but it's better than nothing. And then I have these boards that are right there. Um, just in kind of crappy storage. Um, but that provides a little bit deeper of a shade. Um, and then they do have the shade of here underneath the enclosure that is a full shade and they really like this dry dusty soil that's here and they have a whole run around the back side of the coop if you can kind of see that away so i've been letting them out of the enclosure like one or two days a week but man these girls are forces of nature they are so destructive to the garden so uh just to give the garden a fighting chance um, that I think I'm going to keep it to just once or twice a week. But I still bring them lots of buckets of weeds and things. I still bring them kitchen scraps. We're still bringing them, uh, you know, their feed and stuff. So that's good. What you doing, babe? So thank you guys again for coming and hanging out. I will see y'all next week for this week on the homestead. Until next time, guys, keep on keeping on. Bye. <laughs>